I chose to do my presentation over the debate whether to use or preserve fossil waters. A fossil water is an ancient reserve of underground water. It's accumulated over millions of years and eons. It's a non-renewable resource, unlike other groundwaters that are renewable over time, water does seep back into them. It's a freshwater source stored in large aquifers. As you see at the picture on the bottom of the right, um, the aquifers are under a layer of clay and basically sealed in. Um, this kind of makes it considered fossilized and the amount of fossil water is unknown, but scientists say that when it's gone, it's gone. And on the left, there's a picture of the dark blue is all the different aquifers that we have spanning across the world. There are many pros and cons of using the fossil water. Um, some of the advantages are that it makes desert lands habitable. So you have Libya and Egypt and many other countries over there that are provided this fresh drinking water and it makes it able to grow crops allows populations to grow industries to grow they use um, many people to drill and create the wells providing jobs and boosting their economy um, some of the cons to it it is a non-renewable source so when it's gone it is gone um, as I stated before, they don't know how much there is, so that's just under debate. It, another con is it contributes to the rise of the sea levels. So the more they drill, the more water comes to the surface and is in the atmosphere. Um, fossil waters near the coastlines that are being drilled into are compromised to where the seawater is seeping into the aquifers and it's increasingly getting brackish. There have also been high levels of radiation that have been found in a lot of the aquifers and that has to be treated before it can be usable. And the picture on the right is a picture of an actual aquifer. So. Then there's Libya's Great Man-Made River Project. Um, as I was reading through this, it was amazing to me how massive these pipelines are really going to be. Um, the project started in the 1980s, and it's still being worked on. Um, it's costing billions of dollars, and Libya has stated that they've been paying for it themselves and haven't had to take out any loans from world banks or say borrowing from other countries it's uh, going to be able to pump water from th about 1300 wells able to move 230 million cubic feet of water a day which is a massive amount um, the radiation contamination that has been found in the libya's aquifers needs to go through the water softening process to make it safe for usage. There are some cultural effects to using the water. Some of the benefits are that they have the ability to use the clean water to drink, to cook, to clean um, when they have no other water source available. Having fresh water source will aid an individual's physical, emotional, and economic well-being of um, them and their families so physically they're going to be healthier because the water that they drink is not contaminated it's not full of diseases and um, bad elements emotionally they're going to be happier because they're healthier and able to be more productive in their economy there are alternate solutions for the use of fossil water um, monitoring the amount of fossil water being used is 
in my opinion, a good idea. Limiting the amount that different countries are using just to make it last longer and um, basically everybody gets a little piece of the pie then. Proactive measures, limiting the water usage for all countries and areas within them to conserve all water resources. So just on the, the world scale of our water consumption, there is a lot of waste going on. We do take it for granted here in our country, um, whether we spend it watering the lawn to make it that lush green or, um, you know, making extra loads of laundry, you know, basic household things that you do, you take really long showers or, you know, baths every day, you know, you're wasting a lot of water that could potentially help other people. So just to keep our consumption down, um, rationing it is a viable uh, alternative. And then finding other usable water in the world. So harvesting rainwater which might be difficult in those drought-stricken countries, but showing them how or, you know, to keep it clean and to store it. And then in some of those other countries, turning salt water into fresh water. I think we do have the ability and um, the awareness that they need to know how to use technology to clean their salt water and um, convert it into fresh water. I did my um, survey and I put it on SurveyMonkey and Facebook and emailed it to some friends and family and um, classmates. So I got several responses. I had seven questions overall and six of them were yes or no and then the seventh one was a little bit lengthier. And the first one was how many people are really familiar with fossil water. So it was pretty cool to see that 60, almost 62 percent knew what fossil water was. And then are they concerned about the drilling for this water source? 70 percent said yes, 30 percent said no. Um, I know I'm concerned about it, but it's nice to see that it's on everybody's mind. Third question was, in order to save a population from dying from dehydration, do you agree government should allow tapping into these non-renewable water sources? That was almost split in half. Um, I would agree. I would allow it. Um, it's a life-saving measure for, to have clean drinking water. So <clears throat> I think that it would just need to really be monitored heavily. And then would you be willing to pay an additional sales tax on bottled water in order to fund exploration of possible solutions to drilling for fossil waters? And 65% said yes, and 35% said no. I would be willing to pay a water tax for bottled water. I think it would boost quite a bit as everybody does drink bottled water, especially in Madison. And then, do you believe that the U.S. should be involved in aiding countries finding alternate solutions to drilling for fossil water? And 70% said yes. And I also agree. And as I stated before, we should be sharing what we know about alternate solutions for water, how to clean the water, how to filter it. Um, it is a costly measure, but the fossil water is eventually going to run out and like in Yemen it is it's said that it's only going to last a couple more years at the rate they're drilling it and then they don't know what they're going to do they're going to be out of water they're going to have to import it or do some other measures but it's going to be very costly so number six is would you agree to limit on household water usage if it helped prevent the drilling of the aquifers and that was a 60-40 split, and I would have to agree, I would um, conserve on what I use, and, you know, I'm pretty much 
for the greater good. If it helps others, then that's cool. The last question I had was kind of a fill in the box. So what is an alternative solution that you could suggest for tapping into fossil waters? Um, one of the first ones was educating the public about them and offering alternatives where they're available. And then filter systems um, that would be good to convert salt water into fresh water. And then leaving the groundwater in the or leaving the water in the ground. Um, places should be limited on how much water they can use. Someone said they were against drilling for fossil waters only because they felt that it can and will cause problems in the future by bringing more water into the atmosphere and causing the sea levels to go up and eventually bring all our land underwater. Well, at least California, I'm sure. Um, and then drilling wells to try and find alternate sources. Um, restrict usage of water in all countries based on household size allow a certain amount of water usage. If more than that is used, it would be a much higher cost per unit. And I think that is quite a good idea. Um, we do that with electric and gas and um, some places do have to pay for their water in the city. So I don't think it's that far fetch that that will happen in the future. Then utilizing a system for transporting water from one viable and more plentiful source to those areas in need. And I agree with that. I'm sure it will, would be a costly endeavor, but it would definitely be worth it to see some of our non-renewable resources um, saved so that they last longer. And then purifying seawater and conservation. So I do believe we have the technology to purify the seawater, but we need to share it with those countries that are still developing and a little bit, you know, behind the times, at least where we are. And then developing more efficient and cost-effective ways of treating surface water and use as portable water. Um, expanding water reuse programs, filtering and treatment of gray water for use in toilet flushing, gardening, and other outdoor water usage. There are different levels of filtering, so that would be good and a money-saving um, way to have water for specific uses. And then three others responded that they didn't know what fossil waters were, so they didn't really have an alternate solution but I thought their honesty was pretty cool on that. Um, but I think overall I got a good response and some good ideas on different ways to have water without draining our fossil water. And basically in conclusion, fossil water is going to be consumed whether we like it or not, it's inevitable. Um, at what rate that, that can be decided it was nice to know that people do care about our resources being exhausted. Even though it might not affect us here, it affects somebody um, and our future generations. Alternate water sources do need to be evaluated. Um, and that's like an ongoing battle. So I think monitoring water consumptions will help stretch our non-renewable resources. So whether it's a government doing it or some um, other you know human resource i don't know but i think in the future all of our resources like water and electric and energy consumption it'll all be monitored to a certain extent <laughs>